All right, I'm with John Florex, CEO of Emperor Metals, A-U-O-Z, on the CSE. John, how are you this morning? Pretty good. You, Robert? I'm great. Um, I read your news yesterday. You guys are moving along pretty well. 2,500 meters completed, about 30% of the drill program. And I'm excited to talk about uh, what you've drilled, you know, to date, and also this new target that you're testing right now, the NIP zone. Um, you know, this is a company that I've been following for several months now. Um, I bought some more shares a couple weeks ago, and the gold price cooperated. It's up a hundred dollars per ounce since I I bought some more shares of AUOZ. So I, I want to delve into. Uh, your background and the company and this year's program. Um, so just tell us a little bit about you, John, your background and, and how you came to be involved with the company. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm John Florek. I'm president and CEO of this company. I'm also a geologist. Okay. I've been in the industry for 35, well, close to 35 years. The first half was primarily in exploration. Um, subsequent half was in production. So I worked for companies like, um, you know, BHP early on, Placer Dome, Barrick Tech. Um, I most recently was working for uh, an Eco Eagle up at Detour Lake Gold. But I, before that, I was with Detour Lake Gold. I went through the transition of Cooking Lake and then to an Eco Eagle. So I have a pretty good background working with the majors. In the production setting, I have worked underground at the storied Hemlo Gold Mines. I was working for basically Barrick there. And like I said, most recently I was up at Detour Lake Mine, started with Detour Lake Gold, which was subsequently acquired by Kirkland Lake and then an Eco Eco. And it's one of their flagship properties now for an Eco Eco getting close to producing a million ounces. That was a really interesting story. We can talk about that later, but that's who I am. And so I'm trying to leverage my career, well, I mean, leverage you know, my experience in this space in both exploration and production into a junior. You know, I, I would dabble, didn't I? You know, I was vice president of exploration for some juniors along the way. That's where I met Alex Horsley. And initially, I was just the largest shareholder of this company. You talked about you're getting in your shares just recently. I got all my shares in at 10 cents. I was just the, one of the largest investors of this company at one point in time. And I was incentivized to find a good project. So Alex Horsley and I, he's my business partner. He's the corporate development IR guy for the company. And we are working for the metals group. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But we were incentivized to try to find a project with some, you know, some sort of advanced stage project, with, which we would have some significant belief in that we can grow this deposit to something significant. And that's how we ran across this project and we optioned it. And we can talk about that further on with your other questions, but that's exactly how I got involved. I, I was just an investor. And then the board of directors asked me if I would become president and CEO once we acquired this, this property that we're going to talk about. So you're a geo, you, you have a lot of experience in the gold mining industry, and you became an investor in the company just privately, and you accumulate a bunch of shares, and then you wanted to help the company because obviously you're a big shareholder, and you identified uh, this project uh, in the Abitibi belt, um, which is a prolific gold mining, you know, region of Eastern Canada. I'm looking at uh, in, in the Emperor presentation slide eight, and maybe you can uh, share your screen if, if you want, John, but slide eight shows the location and uh, some of the, the trends, you know, in the region. And, can you uh, um, share your screen? I need your permission to share the screen. Oh, I thought I made you. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, I made you host. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so there's there's these fault zones, which are basically 
the target corridors for the gold deposits. Uh, it's not it's not super complicated, and uh, we're we're right along this porcupine uh, fault zone, in the middle of many million ounces of gold. So tell us about the location of the of the project. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so, yeah, this is pretty exciting. We're in a tier one district. You know, we have an eco eagle to the west. We have an eco eagle to the east. Um, we have Newmont's in the district. Barrick just made an entry into the district. We have West Dome. So it's a IM Gold has a big open pit. So we're in a tier one district within 45 minutes away from our property. We have like about six different mills and tail ends dams. So, yeah, and out, uh, a gram per ton here is almost like equivalent to like three grams per ton elsewhere because all the synergies. We have a highway running through the property. There's power close by. Um, you couldn't get a better jurisdiction. So that was one of the things that attracted us because here we are. We're sitting on a potentially high-grade gold deposit because there is a historical mineral resource of 727,000 ounces of gold Okay, with an average grade of 5.4 grams per ton. But was what was really attractive about this, it had an average thickness of 5.7 meters. And so that was really excited because with those type of thicknesses, there's always that potential to grow a deposit. So this is why we focused in on this area. Um, the vision is that we potentially have this high grade gold deposit um, what we originally sold investors was basically this, this is the first visual and we created this using AI, but we sold investors of a high grade gold deposits, which we can grow ounces internally and externally. Now, this was the first ever 3D model developed on the property. And basically we took that model and made a mindable shape optimizer. So these are actual stopes. And so this is the first basically x-ray vision, I guess, of what the deposit looks like. And so we sold investors that we're going to go to the deposit, you know, internally and externally along these plunge lines down dips in between gaps. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, but with our 2023 drilling, we started sampling the host, or the first company to sample the host rock of these high grid lenses that I just showed you. So historical workers would have sampled those grades in red. No one would have sampled, you know, the, the grades in, in black or red that you're seeing on this table. And so we were hitting in the host rock 25 meters of 1.69 grams per ton, you know, 24 meters of basically half a gram or, you know, 13 meters of 3.2. So that the host rock was mineralized. So it really was exciting because it allowed us to visual, to create a new conceptual model of this property in the heart of the epitivity. And would it, which would have been this large scale open pit above this high grade gold deposit. So that was the exciting part of this project in 2023. And as you mentioned, you know, if you potentially view this because of all the synergies and everything around us as a satellite deposit for supplemental feed for all these mills in the area, you wouldn't have those CapEx costs like building a mill, building a tail and dam, which can run half a billion to a billion dollars for a project like this. And you don't have those runaway costs. So we're really excited to be in this district. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the infrastructure advantages and the location advantages cannot be overstated here uh it stands out as probably the best location uh for a gold project and a potential future gold mine that i could possibly imagine so let's talk about the plan here in 2024 so you, you raised money you raised uh i think it was about four million dollars you're well funded for the drill program this year it's eight thousand meters in total uh, so you got about 2,500 meters completed to date. Tell us about what you've learned from the first 30% of this year's program. Yeah, so one of the things in 2023 is that 
were the first company to sample the entire core. And going into this season, we had $4 million in the bank, basically. And we said, how are we going to best spend this money to bring this story along? So the goal was we want to increase inferred ounces because we want to do a, an updated mineral resource estimate in quarter one of 2025. And because we're the first company to identify and sample the entire core, um, we our strategy in 2024 is to basically build inferred ounces. So we were drilling, our first 2,500 meters was in the ultimate pit here, which is basically it's 1.8 kilometers long by 800 meters wide, down to 400 meters depth. So it's a significant pit. And we have these satellites that are to the east. Um, but our first 2,500 was in within this ultimate pit. We were trying to drill those intercepts that we saw like in 2023 and build ounces, those incremental ounces in the open pit that have, haven't been accounted for. So that's where our first 2,500 meters was, you know, that's what our main task was. And so at the same time, we want to also understand the gap between the main ultimate pit and what we're calling the nip zone. It's an area that has significant grade and thickness. Now, that's exciting because there's very little drilling in between there. Um, and no one's, like I said, sampled the host rock. You know, when no one cared in the past about, you know, one or two grams per ton, you know, this is district was high grade gold. So no one ever really cared if they if had one or two grams per ton, they just wouldn't sample it because they were looking for a five to 10 grams per ton type material. This is this whole district was famous for being high grade underground gold deposits and which we have here. But we see the opportunity to potentially have a large scale open pit above a high grade gold deposit uh, because of the anomalous nature of the host rock. And, you know, that would be pretty exciting because you could start building ounces a lot more rapidly in the open pit environment. And so that's what we're trying to do here. Okay, so yeah, the few a few follow up questions there. So the drilling to date in the open pit footprint, um, it's it's to upgrade more ounces to the inferred category. I mean, that's what it says in your news. How many ounces do you think you can add to the inferred cat category? And I know that's a speculative question, um, but um, yeah, let, uh, let's just speculate. <laughs> um, well, you know, the goal is we're going to try to double um, this resource because you have to start thinking about how the original historical mineral resource was calculated. It was calculated at $960 gold, okay? So right now we're at, what are we at, 2,400 plus? Um, so they had a three grams per ton cutoff with a 30 gram per ton cap. So we're thinking in the underground environment, we could probably, because of these thicknesses, we could probably get away with a two gram per ton cutoff underground you know, with the 30 gram per ton cap. And then when we're in the open pit environment, that's the exciting part, Robert, is that we can mine in order of magnitude less grade. So instead of two grams or three grams per ton underground, we can mine like 0.3 grams per ton in the open pit environment. And if that host rock is mineralized, which people haven't identified before, except we're the first company to really pinpoint that, we can add those incremental ounces to the high grade lenses in the near surface environment. So that's what we're doing. We're extending the high grade lenses in the near surface environment and also build in those incremental ounces in the host rock of those high grade lenses. And so that's that's exciting. So I would like to try to, you know, the goal would be to try to basically double this, this 727,000 ounce resource. So that's, one, that's 1 1.5 million ounces uh, 
approximately, and, and that would be published in Q1 of 2025? Yeah, that's the goal. Okay. So we'll see what we can do there. And, you know, a lot of that to make it in into the inferred category, you have to have certain spaces between drill holes. Might I also emphasize that because we built the first 3D models using AI and stuff on this project, the, the historical mineral resource was done using 2D methods. The polygonal resource calculation was done on it. But we're able to see the distance between drill holes. And 40% of the drill holes were within 30 meters of each other. So that's exciting because that could potentially be in a more indicated category. So that saves investors a lot of money when it comes to like building this out. Um, but right now we're trying to get space in so we can build inferred ounces in the open pit environment, as well as about, I would say about 20% of our program this year will also tackle some of those plunge lines in the underground scenario as well. Really, really high grade, sexy looking rocks. And so we want to test some of those targets because we want to see how far we can extend these footprints. Okay. And final topic, I want to talk about the NIP zone. So I get excited by really high grade target areas. It looks like NIP has, you know, some, you know, historical drill holes, uh, 2.5 meters of 51 grams per ton, <clears throat> 16 meters of six grams per ton gold. Those are some pretty good hits. Um, so tell us about NIP. What are you doing at NIP? And tell us about this, this chargeability high that you're highlighting on page three of yesterday's news. As you said, it's an untested target area at NIP, and it looks like a very strong chargeability uh, area. Yeah, um, that's a, a good question. Um, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah, but... I can. Yep. So historical workers, they basically did some downhole IP resistivity. And basically, they really haven't capitalized on this model. It was done in 2011 for these existing drill holes. And, and they dropped the property back then. You know, it was a tough market in 2011, 2012. They loved the property, according to the ex-CEO um, of, the, of the company. And, you know, it was just hard to raise money. But they were on the right track. What they saw was, you know, there was these huge chargeability. You can see these drill hole traces to the north. There's some nice resistance. This one's just chargeability. And there's untested targets, like big, big areas of high chargeability, which basically is disseminated sulfides. And that's what's carrying the gold a lot of, in this deposit. So, um, you know, it's a whole sulfidation environment, like one of, 1% pyrite is almost like two grams per ton gold. So we don't have a lot of sulfides, like the max amount of sulfides in any section of rock is about 10%. But that would care be very, very high grade stuff. 10% so sulfides see, would show up though as that strong charge, right? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. that's the, the hot spots. So that, that stuff in pink is the hot spots, which basically says that there should be more gold there in the broad areas. And you can see there's a limited extent on this model. We expect that to continue down dip, maybe a long strike. So we're going to try to understand, you know, what this historical model, um, how it could basically be used, applied to, to basically build this large scale open pit. And as we described before, we wanted to, um, we're starting to think like, how can we connect these satellite deposits? So maybe there is a, a huge opportunity to expand this ultimate pit eastward, or they'll have two big pits in close proximity to each other. So yeah, there's a lot of exploration. Uh, we have over 100,000 meters that have been drilled on this property already. When you look at a project of this magnitude, you want at least 300,000 meters plus. So you look at our analogs in the district, Okay, they're like 300 to 600,000 meters for very similar projects. Um, and their their market cap is significantly higher. They're like 50 million to 200 million. We're still at like a $10 million market cap. So a huge opportunity for investors to get in on a, a pretty exciting project that's not well known. And what I've always said is maybe 
we just picked up this property just a little over a year ago. And we built the first AI models, the first mineralized model, the first geological model. Sometimes it takes, you know, years for companies to build a geological model. We did that all within one year. And now we have the first conceptual model. So maybe we're building the narrative too quickly for the market to digest. But here's a story that, that's moving right along with the gold price trending upwards. And um, like I tell every, all the investors out there recently is I'm really excited about Q2 earnings coming out with all the majors because, you know, gold's been at a robust $2,300, $2,400 in this quarter. And that's significant because when they publish their earnings in quarter two, probably mid-August, most of them, you know, we're going to see, you know, exceeds expectations or outperform in regards to profitability. So I think people's heads will turn and they'll start looking at um, our industry a little bit more closely. And here's a great opportunity of an undervalued from, company. From your lips to God's ears, John. Uh, <laughs> one more question about NIP. So I, I, I see there's quartz, feldspar, porphyry at, at NIP. So it, is is there any copper here or is this just gold only deposit? Yeah, so far um, it's mostly gold. Okay. It might be zones of a little bit of copper. But yeah, it, it's it's basically a, a gold dominated system. And in the host rock, like um in 2023, a lot of the host rock is um quartz fells by porphyry, and that's where we had like 25 meters of 1.69 grams per ton. I mean, you start looking at, um, you know, some of the other deposits in the district, like the Gold X mine that Nico Eagle has. They have similar thickness. I think they're average grade underground. They're mining like 1.62 grams per ton in material like that. So not only do we have high grade, but we also have low grade bulk tonnage in the open pit environment. And potentially, you know, as this project matures, um, you would have low-grade bulk tonnage underground as well, like the gold X mine that Inico we go on. So we have like three different scenarios where we can grow gold on this property. Okay. Final final question. It's a two-parter. The question that all investors love to ask: When will we first start to get assays back from this drilling? That's the first question. And then the second question is: Let's say I buy shares today, or somebody buys shares. Um, six months from now will be January 2025, let's say February 20, uh, 2025. What should that investor look for the company to announce to give confirmation that this year has been a success? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start backwards. What's going to be a success? We want to push this over the 1 million ounce hurdle. Because a lot of the institutions won't really look at us until we're over a million ounces. Like I said, um, potentially, you know, with the gold price being so high, without any drilling, we've already exceeded that. So, because you could mine lower grades, especially with the open pit model above this high grade. No one's ever conceptualized that before. So that's number one, that's, that, that's the hurdle because institutions will start paying attention to us at a million ounce, as well as the majors coming in for a potential equity stake because they have mills in the district that basically need additional feed. They're under capacity. So this is a nice little, you know, hopefully growing deposit. You know, we see this as, you know, in the near term, you know, 2 million ounces in the long term, um, you know, from a thousand meters up two to six million ounces and growing potentially at depth, these deposits grow at depth. But to answer your question, that is um, what we're trying to achieve. And news flow, we have 16,000 meters of core to assay. So 8,000 meters of drilling and 8,000 meters of historical core sampling. As I mentioned, the host rock for these high grade mineral, mineralization has never been sampled. So we have 16,000 meters of news flow for the low price of $3 million. So you're looking at under $200 all in cost for this project's 
you look further north and people are six to eight hundred dollars a meter. So we are we're doing pretty good in regards to constraining our costs and giving the investors, you know, more bang for their buck. So um yeah, um, that's a lot of news flow. I think that September we'll start seeing it come out. There's been some delays with manpower with some of our contractors, uh, both on the drilling side and on the um, contract geology side. We're using Technominix based in Luan. They're a great outfit. I think um, some of the majors are using them too. So, you know, they had some recent people depart and we had to fill some of these gaps. So we're a little bit behind schedule in regards to getting the, the you know, the core to the assay labs, but we're continuing the drill. It will get cut and it will get sent to the assay lab. But um, yeah, I'm thinking September, you know, the results start coming in. Okay. So the results start coming in in September and flow through the rest of the year and possibly into January. And then resource will be updated in Q1 2025. And we're shooting for between one and 1.5 million ounces. Yep. Okay, great, John. Thank you so much for your time and look forward to speaking again in August. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Robert. Cheers.